The upcoming iPad Mini 8 is quietly shaping up to be one of Apple's most surprising and forward-thinking updates in years. And what makes this refresh truly shocking isn't a massive redesign or an iPad Pro-level processor. It's sound. Yes, audio. That's the area where Apple seems ready to take a giant leap. And according to the latest industry leaks and internal supply chain chatter, Apple is preparing a bold new speaker system for the iPad Mini 8 that completely abandons the old concept of speaker cutouts. No holes. No grills. No traditional openings. Just a perfectly sealed, uninterrupted slab of aluminum and glass that looks almost sci-fi in its design language. This isn't just aesthetic minimalism. It's a total reinvention of how a tablet might produce sound. Instead of relying on conventional speaker drivers that push air through tiny holes, Apple is apparently experimenting with a vibration-driven audio system that transforms the body of the tablet itself into a speaker. Imagine holding an iPad where the sound seems to emerge from everywhere at once, as if the entire surface is an acoustic instrument engineered with microscopic precision. This isn't entirely unheard of. Huawei attempted something similar with its acoustic display tech, and Sony has used panel vibration speakers on its high-end OLED TVs. But doing this on a compact tablet that people touch constantly is far more challenging. The idea is simple in theory, but insanely complex in execution. Instead of fixed speaker units, tiny actuators or exciters would be attached directly to the internal frame or possibly even the OLED panel itself, causing specific regions of the surface to vibrate with carefully controlled frequency and amplitude. This would enable Apple to simulate directional audio by making one side of the tablet vibrate slightly differently from the other, creating a pseudo-stereo effect that feels like the sound is tied to actual positions on the screen. Now imagine watching a movie where the dialogue genuinely feels like it's coming from the character's mouth on the screen instead of vague general audio coming from the edges of the device. That's the kind of experience Sony advertises with its acoustic surface audio tech on TVs, and if Apple adapts this idea in its typical refine it until it's magic style, the result could feel astonishingly immersive. But of course, every revolutionary idea comes with its own list of engineering headaches. For example, bass production becomes significantly harder when you flatten a speaker system into a solid panel. Traditional speakers rely on air displacement, especially for low frequencies. And since a display can only vibrate so much without distorting the image or causing structural problems, Apple might need to use additional internal resonators or deep software tuning to fill out the low-end sound. Sony compensates for this on its TVs by hiding physical subwoofers inside the chassis, and Apple might do something similar. Maybe ultra-slim acoustic chambers built around the interior edges or a vibration-enhanced bass unit sealed inside the frame. And then there's the issue of touch interference. If your fingers are on the screen, your hand may absorb or disrupt certain vibrations. But this is Apple, the company notorious for obsessing over tiny details. So expect some type of grip detection logic that adjusts vibration strength or frequency based on where the user is touching the screen. This could involve capacitive sensing, gyroscope-based hand position detection, or even micro-momentary recalibration of the vibration cycle in real time. Apple will absolutely brand this with some polished marketing name like Spatial Resonance Audio, Surface Acoustic Engine, or Liquid Harmonic Sound. Because if there's one thing Apple does better than engineering, it's naming complex technologies with smooth, futuristic terminology that sticks in people's minds. And beyond sound quality, the removal of speaker holes brings a massive advantage in durability. With no openings for dust, sand, water, or tiny debris to enter, the iPad Mini 8 could achieve far better environmental resistance than any previous Mini. The current iPad Mini has no waterproofing rating at all, which is embarrassing for a device meant to be portable and used in real-world environments. The new seal design could finally introduce meaningful water resistance, perhaps IP67 or even IP68. Microphone holes will likely remain, though they MIG. HTB re-engineered with hydrophobic membranes and tighter sealing. The point is, this is more than a cosmetic choice. It's a practical evolution toward a more rugged, travel-friendly, 
Everyday Proof iPad Mini, the kind people can toss in a bag or use on the go without worrying about moisture or dust. Now let's talk about the other massive upgrade coming to this tiny tablet, OLED. After years of waiting, and after seeing OLED panels on iPhones and high-end iPads, the Mini is finally making the leap from LCD to a brilliant OLED display. This alone is enough to make the Mini 8 feel like a brand new category of device. OLED isn't just slightly better. It changes the entire experience. Deep, inky blacks, infinite contrast ratios, richer color accuracy, pixel-level lighting control, and dramatically improved HDR performance mean everything from gaming to reading to watching films will look more vibrant and immersive. If you've ever compared an LCD iPad mini to an iPhone Pro screen, the difference is night and day. The mini always felt good in hand, but visually it lagged behind Apple's premium displays, and this upgrade will eliminate that gap entirely. Apple is reportedly testing these OLED panels extensively, ensuring they meet extremely strict brightness, longevity, and burn-in standards. Samsung Display is likely the supplier, but Apple doesn't simply accept whatever panel Samsung sends. They demand custom calibration, custom anti-burn-in logic, custom brightness tolerance, and custom uniformity profiles tuned specifically for the 8-inch class form factor. Now, there's a debate in the leak community about whether the iPad Mini 8 will support 120Hz promotion. Many sources claim Apple will stick with a 60Hz single-stack LTPS OLED due to cost and power constraints. But logically, with the iPhone 17 lineup moving fully to 120Hz and mid-tier Apple devices trending upward in refresh rates, it makes no sense for Apple to release a 60Hz device in 2026 or 2027. The Mini is not a budget device. It's a compact premium product. So there's a strong chance Apple either surprises us with 120 hertz or introduces a hybrid solution like a variable 60 to 90 hertz panel. My personal bet leans toward 120 hertz because Apple is well aware of how obsessed many users are with smooth scrolling, fast animation response, and high refresh UI. And after introducing OLED, it would be strange to give users a visually stunning panel that still refreshes like a 2015 tablet. So the rumor mill might be wrong again, and Apple could shock everyone by giving the mini full promotion support. Screen size is expected to increase slightly too, from 8.3 inches to around 8.7 inches due to slimmer bezels. Apple likely won't change the physical size much because one-handed usability is the entire identity of the iPad mini. But by shrinking the bezel borders, they can give users a more immersive canvas without compromising portability. This will make the Mini feel like a device built for 2026 rather than something trapped in a 2019 design cycle. But now let's get into performance. Because the iPad Mini 8 isn't just about flashy displays and bold audio tech. It's also getting a huge internal power jump thanks to the A19 Pro chipset. This chip is built on TSMC's third-generation 3 nanometers process, meaning improved efficiency, lower heat, and significantly better long-term performance. Apple is promising up to three times the GPU gains over the A17 Pro found in the current Mini, and with a 16-core neural engine, the device will handle AI-focused tasks, machine learning operations, and next-gen Apple intelligence features with far greater stability. Four or five years down the line, when iPad OS is packed with heavier AI tools, this Mini will still feel modern. Apple is also boosting RAM to 12 gigabytes, which is massive for a small tablet. This allows for smoother multitasking, longer browser session stability, faster rendering in creative apps, and an overall future-proofing that ensures the Mini won't feel outdated by 2028. Let's dive deeper into what OLED means for battery life and real-world usage. With OLED, each pixel controls its own light output. That means darker content uses significantly less power. Since iPad OS has a system-wide dark mode and many apps already support darker themes, users will likely see battery improvements, especially during reading, browsing, and video playback. OLED also provides instant pixel response, so animations, game graphics, and menu transitions look razo, are sharp and fluid. 
Even typing feels faster because the pixels respond quicker than on LCD. Now, when is all of this arriving? The release timeline is one big mystery cloud drifting between 2026 and 2027. Some analysts predicted a spring 2026 release alongside an updated iPad Air. But since the Air reportedly isn't getting OLED next year, Apple might avoid launching the Mini at the same event because it would overshadow the Air completely. The more realistic scenario is a September 2026 launch next to the next-gen iPhones. But there are supply chain whispers suggesting the OLED panels could experience production challenges, potentially pushing the Mini 8 to early 2027. And historically, the Mini has unpredictable release schedules. The gap between the Mini 6 and Mini 7 was about three years and barely offered more than a chip refresh. So Apple might stick with a longer release cycle again. If Apple delays OLED due to cost or yield issues, they might release a transitional version with a new chipset first and introduce the display upgrade later. Design-wise, the overall silhouette of the Mini is expected to stay familiar. Flat edges, aluminum frame, Touch ID integrated into the power button, USB-C port, and Apple Pencil Pro support all remain. This makes sense. The Mini's design is already beloved, and Apple rarely changes what works. But with the slimmer bezels and possible thinner chassis, the device will feel more futuristic and refined. Don't expect magic keyboard support. It's simply too small to function as a laptop replacement. But for note-taking, sketching, reading, writing, schoolwork, drone control, gaming, and travel use, the Mini remains unmatched. Connectivity upgrades include Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and improved cellular modems. USB-C stays, but Thunderbolt is unlikely at this size and price bracket. And now, the big question, should you buy the current iPad Mini or wait for this new one? With OLED, a sealed audio system, a 19 Pro Power, more RAM, better water resistance, and a more immersive display, the Mini 8 looks like a major generational leap not a minor refresh. However, leaks also say the price will increase by at least $100, meaning a base price around $599. That's not cheap for a small tablet. So if you want something more budget-friendly, the current Mini with the A17 Pro might become heavily discounted and offer great value. But if you want the most advanced, future-proof Mini ever made, the one fans have been begging Apple to create for years, then waiting is the smarter choice. The Mini 8 could become the perfect balance of portability, power, and premium features. OLED finally fixes the one thing users always complained about. Water resistance makes the Mini safer for outdoor use, travel, and random accidents. And the powerful new chipset keeps it relevant for years. So now the big question, are you planning to wait for the OLED waterproof iPad Mini? Or will you grab the discounted A17 Pro model? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoy these deep dive Apple leak breakdowns, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button to support the channel. More Apple news, rumors, and long form breakdowns are coming your way soon.